In March, a study of a small group of 2016 and 2017 Nissan LEAF models equipped with the larger, 30kWh battery pack that had abnormal battery degradation. That study concluded that nearly 4 out of 5 of the larger battery packs examined lost cell capacity 3 times faster than earlier 24kWh battery packs that were studied. This week, Nissan said it would issue a software update for the battery controllers to help stem the power loss. The software fix was reported by Clean Fleet Report. According to the report, the software fix addresses a known issue about the controller miscalculating the available range and charge from the battery. Initially, some suspected that the Leaf's air cooling for its batteries rather than liquid cooling was to blame for reduced capacity and higher degradation. The study in March didn't observe the redesigned 2018 Nissan Leaf's battery pack, which was upgraded further to 40 kWh. In 2015, Nissan changed its battery chemistry to a so-called lizard cell system that was said to be more resistant to higher temperatures. Many LEAF owners had already replaced their 2016 or 2017 batteries with replacement packs, although those systems appear to have suffered the same issues. Those battery replacements were covered under Nissan's powertrain warranty. This year, Nissan began selling in Japan refurbished battery packs for older LEAF models. The refurbished replacement batteries sell for around $2,800, which is substantially lower than the cost of new replacement batteries. Nissan hasn't yet announced a similar program for LEAF owners in the US, who may be looking to trade up from 24kWh batteries to 30kWh batteries. Subaru has sprung back into the three-row SUV battlefield with a fully competitive model that offers a good engine and comfortable ride, but its merely average third row and lackluster handling hold it back. The Ascent's package is successful because it takes a simple, function-focused approach that merges convenience and practicality, especially for families. The automaker has been conspicuously absent from the segment for years, ever since it retired its quirky Tribeca in 2014, and there hadn't been a step-up option for customers who had outgrown the Forester SUV and Outback wagon. It faces established, popular models such as the Ford Explorer, Honda Pilot, and Toyota Highlander. The Ascent has a turbocharged four-cylinder engine in a segment where V6s dominate, but it's not like it brings a knife to a gunfight. This engine may trail its chief rivals in cylinders and horsepower, but it works well in the real world. The engine has good power for everyday driving, aided by a continuously variable transmission that mimics the gear changes in a regular transmission better than most CVTs that try to pull off that trick. And this four-cylinder is quieter than a typical Subaru engine. The Ascent Base and Premium are Environmental Protection Agency rated at 23 mpg overall, and the more lavishly equipped, heavier Limited and Touring are rated at 22 mpg overall. The base model can tow 2,000 pounds, and the other trim levels can pull up to 5,000 pounds. The Ascent is offered only in all-wheel drive configuration, typical for Subaru. Drivers can take minor off-road excursions with its 8.7 inches of ground clearance, X mode to bolster traction, and heel descent mode to help tackle steep slopes. The handling, however, was less impressive. The Ascent feels large and tends to lumber a bit in corners. It definitely lacks the sporty demeanor of a Mazda CX-9. Getting in the Ascent cabin is easy, thanks to its large doors and relatively low step in height. The seat comfort is good as long as one opts for one of the two top trims, Limited and Touring, which have leather and a two-way lumbar adjustment. Lower trims don't offer enough lower back support. The controls are easy to see, reach, and use. The infotainment touchscreen display is clear and responds quickly to commands. 
Interacting with the trip information and flipping through the different information bits can be confusing because they're displayed on a different screen. More expensive trim versions offer Android Auto and Apple CarPlay compatibility. A Wi-Fi hotspot can support up to 8 devices to entertain connected families. The Ascent can receive over-the-air software updates, potentially providing fixes and improvements quicker than waiting on routine service needs to take the Ascent back to the dealer. Subaru will force the implementation of safety-related updates, without waiting for owners to approve them. Updates that the automaker considers to be optional must be approved by the owner before they're implemented. The USB and auxiliary inputs are conveniently located below the climate controls, and there is a handy shelf to store your phone or iPod. The Ascent's soft surfaces and contrasting interior accents add an upscale flair, though there is a surplus of seams, creating a distracting number of lines. That said, the Touring's premium ambience befits its price. The simple head-up display used for forward collision warning and lane-keeping alerts is a standout feature. It's nothing fancy just simple colored lights that appear on the lower windshield, minimizing the distance the driver's eyes must travel from the road to interpret the message. The Ascent Base comes with a second-row bench seat, but all other trims offer a no-cost choice of bench or captain's chairs. There's plenty of legroom. There are convenient controls for adjusting rear climate settings, USB ports for plugging in chargers, and even a 110-volt outlet. A panoramic moonroof is available on the Premium and Limited, and it comes standard on the Touring. The fold-away third row is slightly elevated, creating theater-style seating. Third row space is limited, but it can be useful for tweens and teens in a pinch. Passengers will find that the grab handles mounted on top of the second row captain's chairs make getting out of the third row easier. With all seats upright, there is enough space in the way back to stow bags or small luggage. When the seats are folded down, the second and third rows don't quite flatten. Standard equipment includes Subaru's EyeSight Driver Assist technology, a suite that includes forward collision warning automatic emergency braking, lane keep assist, and adaptive cruise control. Head-up display, blind spot warning, rear cross traffic alert, and rear automatic braking are available. The largest Subaru in the automaker's history, at 196.8 inches, is bigger than a Toyota Highlander and comes equipped to compete with the established mid-sized three-row SUV leaders. People want the Nissan LEAF. Maybe not as many as those who want the Tesla Model 3, but Nissan isn't drawing comparisons. In a recent press release, the automaker divulged the second-gen EV had seen increasing demand in the US, Europe, and Japan. In fact, there's a wait list for the car, and it's only getting bigger. In early March, Nissan said about 19,000 people had ordered the car. Now, that number has swollen to over 35,000. Sure, it's not hundreds of thousands like what Tesla is dealing with, but it's still a pretty impressive number. Keep in mind these orders are pouring in from markets around the world. Tesla is just struggling with orders in a small section of the market. If you look closer, these numbers show that thousands of new orders are being added each month. Nissan can't build the new Leaf quickly enough, so if you want one you better get in line now. The shortage of 2018 Nissan Leafs in the US isn't as bad as in some areas, but word is spreading that the new generation is a huge improvement. Considering starting MSRP is $29,990 in the US, and after the federal tax credit that drops to as low as $22,490, it's understandable why people are scooping up the Leaf. No matter how long you're waiting for one, it will likely pale in comparison to those poor saps still waiting for their $35,000 Tesla Model 3.